Hello everybody. Today I'm painting Bidwell Park in oil paint, uh, but the principle would be the same with any kind of paint. I've started with a pretty big canvas and you can see I'm working off an iPad for my uh, reference, a photo of Upper Bidwell Park looking down into the canyon. It's a nice photo with not too many colors. We've got green, yellow, some brown, and blue sky. But I've started with this green and there's subtle variations between yellow yellowish green and more bluish green. I'm only using two colors here at the beginning which is this ultramarine blue and um, I'm not exactly, I think Indian yellow and I'm just mixing different ratios of them so a little bit of yellow into the further trees and a little bit more yellow into these close trees. Um, the top left sort of trees I've actually added a hint of red into so it so they're a little bit duller gray. I chose to use the green first just because I wanted to use the darkest color first. I like to um, recently go bold when I'm starting a painting, not shy away from the dark colors. I could have even started with a darker green here now that I'm looking at it again. That's okay. Just roughly going in with all these small strokes and small strokes um, throughout a whole painting will kind of keep it all cohesive, all connected together, so it looks all nice together. If you use a bunch of big strokes, then... Oh, see, there's my brush. Big old brush. I'm using my biggest brush, actually. If I used a bunch of big strokes, though, um, you know, it would... I would fill the canvas quicker, but it wouldn't be as interesting, all the variations in color. I like to take pictures of the uh, canvas as I go on so I can have progress photos. So this is all the green and now I'm mixing the next color that I'm gonna work with which is a reddish orange color and I'm gonna do these rocks in the foreground with this orange and just like the green I'm using a couple colors to mix the orange that same yellow along with a red and I'm actively mixing it as I'm painting mixing different ratios of red and orange and even mixing a little bit of brown in there um, so that I get lighter, darker, more colorful areas. Also putting horizontal strokes in in the distance because that's where you can see the dirt um, on the top of the buttes there. So um, for the rocks, instead of this uh, sort of grassy strokes, I'm doing slicey strokes so it's more sharp angles and rocks tend to have a lot of sharp angles to them um, and you'd think rocks would be more gray but I actually noticed a lot of red in these rocks um, just I don't know exactly what type of rock they are I'm uh, pushing it even more red than the photo just because I want it to contrast against the green red and green are actually opposite on the color wheel so that's cool Anytime you can push two colors next to each other that are opposite on a color wheel, it's going to look nice and vibrant. So that's why I chose to add a little bit extra red in there, make them a little bit more colorful than they are on my reference picture, as you can see them when I move my back out of the way. Um, now I'm going in with dark color, I'd like a dark gray color to really deepen the shadows around the rocks, keeping those sharp, bold lines. Yeah, slicing around the edges of the rocks. Now I'm also going to do the uh, canyon where the, where the uh, river goes through, or the stream. Um, you can't see the water, but you can see the, the dark canyon, and I'm, so I'm using this dark color. And also this dark color on the um, buttes on the opposing side just like the photo and I'm seeing these layers of horizontal lines um, where the where the uh, incline kind of plateaus and then there's trees and then there's a plateau and trees kind of stacked on top of each other like a layer cake or something um, really paying attention to my reference as I'm going here yeah, a little bit more in the brown, and then I'm going to switch colors here in a minute. 
Uh, I'm going with the black now around the closer trees to add some dark shadows on the underside of them and just around the whole painting. Yeah, and that looks pretty good for the for the green and the red. So now I'm mixing my next color, going in with the blue sky. So I've, in charcoal, I had made a sketch of the whole thing right before I started. And so I've outlined where I want the clouds to be. And I'm making the, the more saturated, darker blue towards the top of the painting and a little bit lighter blue by adding white and a little bit of red to make it more purple on the underside of the clouds, um, leaving some white space as I'm going, which I end up covering up some of it, and I'll, I end up wiping it back, bringing it right up to the edge of the earth there, and s still trying not to do too many big strokes, keeping the whole painting using a big brush but with small strokes sort of keeps it nice and connected. Um, there we go. Paying attention to the bottom of the clouds which tend to have shadows on them. Um, also t clouds tend to get thinner, skinnier uh, towards the as you move down and they get thicker and poofier as you move upwards on your painting, so keeping that in mind. Here's my yellow. I'm using that Indian yellow mixed with a little bit of green um, and I think even a little bit of orange in the top left area. And as I move right, it gets a little bit more yellow and a little bit more green in there. Um, and I added a little bit of white in there just to lighten it up. I want it to s darken as it goes farther away and kind of be brighter at the bottom right corner. So there I go, filling in all that left over white area that's on my painting there. Not be too careful with all these uh, trees that I've drawn in because I can always do some over the top. Also adding some of this yellow up into the mountains on the on the right and even into the tops of the trees closest to me to make them a little bit brighter. Just all over, adjusting anywhere I, I see on my reference that oh, I need to be a little bit brighter or a little bit more yellow, I've added that color in. Take another reference photo and move along here. So now I'm using a little paper towel to wipe away the clouds because um, I added a little bit too much oil paint on so I use a towel often and I'm also wiping some of the distant hill away anywhere that maybe I feel like there's a little bit too much paint I just wipe with a paper towel sometimes I'll use a q-tip even in these closer rocks this also blends the colors into each other a little bit which grays them out um, which in the rocks kind of helps dull that. Maybe I went a little bit too orange with it. So now I'm reestablishing some of the stuff that I took out with a darker green. I'm putting in the trees. So I've kind of rounded the loop there. I went from green, and then I went to the opposite to red, then I went to blue, then I went to yellow. Now I'm going back to green with a darker, more saturated green. Um, I like to do that, kind of go one at a time around the color wheel and push it in either direction. Instead of using similar colors, I try to go back and forth opposite. I learned that sort of from tuning a drum. You don't tune a drum by moving around. You go in a star pattern across the drum, and that keeps the drum nice and even when you tune it down. So I so sort of apply that same logic to painting as I'm, I do my darks and then my lights and then my darks and then my lights back and forth, pushing the painting back and forth. I stopped filming here, but I took a few more pictures just 
putting more blacks in the foreground and here's the final final product you can see all the small strokes really worked i think together to make this cohesive flowiness to the painting um, the rocks in the foreground i ended up putting some uh, some green some light yellowish green on top where there was almost a mossy look um, you can see how many different colors of green ended up in these closest bushes and then how just rough the trees are down in the canyon. Um, I didn't put much um, detail into those at all, and I think it's for the better. If everything has a similar level of detail, the painting tends to look all cohesive. Um, if there was a subject, maybe like a, I don't know, a person or something, maybe I would want them to be more detailed and everything else to be not. But in this sort of landscape, I like it all as one image. It sort of reminds me of a memory or something. And don't forget to sign it. In the bottom left, I signed my name, Bone. All right. Hope you learned something today off of this oil painting. I sure had fun painting it. I'm going to give it to my brother who lives close to this area, so he'll love it. Um, all right. Thanks for listening, and have a great day.